Hey, thank you so much, and welcome to the webinar. This is our AWS SysOps Associate Webinar, and my name is Anthony Sequera, full-time instructor here at CBT Nuggets. I started at CBT Nuggets probably about six years ago as a contractor, and very quickly moved to full-time instructor, and I am thrilled to talk to you today in this webinar about one of our latest courses, the Amazon Web Services SysOps Associate Course. Now, I need you to understand that CBT Nuggets is getting really serious when it comes to AWS training. If you go to the courses area and notice I'm on the select by vendor section, if you scroll down and look at Amazon Web Services, you're going to see that we have the technical essentials course taught by my friend Ben Finkel. This is an awesome course to start with if you are brand new to Amazon Web Services. And then we have the one we're talking about today, the AWS Certified SysOps Administrator course and these are two of many that we're going to be adding over the next few months and I can see beyond that because Amazon Web Services certainly is popular and we want to build out a nice library for you. Now when we take a look at this AWS SysOps Administrator course notice that it is going to consist of 23 nuggets and notice they are very specific as to topic. For instance, meet your default virtual private cloud, something I'll share more information with you about in a moment, creating virtual private clouds, and AWS connectivity features, which has to do with connecting to those VPCs. So very specific, very brief, to the point nuggets that make up this course. And when you're in these nuggets, don't forget we have all kinds of great features for you, like the ability to take notes. And I highly recommend that. You should be in there note-taking, bookmarking, and taking advantage of all of the great features that we have for you in the CBT Nugget interface. Something else to consider is that if you get a nugget that's really complicated to you, maybe you don't know about elastic load balancing at all, so you want to watch these two nuggets on on the elastic load balancer, maybe you want to watch them multiple times. That's no problem at all, and that's simple to do inside the software. Also, there's going to be quizzes as you move throughout these nuggets to make sure you're retaining the information inside them. And by the way, I mentioned that we are going to be adding a lot more courses to our AWS library. And if you're wondering what is next, what will be the next course we release, it's going to be the AWS Certified Solutions Architect Associate course. And obviously, this coordinates to a particular certification exam up at Amazon Web Services. But remember, our goal is to not just teach the test. As we move through these nuggets, our goal is to make sure you can succeed when it comes to Amazon Web Services and the various products that make it up. Now, how do you get the most out of our SysOps Associate course, or for that matter, any of the courses that we'll be developing here on AWS at CBT Nuggets? Well, it is critical that you practice. You gotta get in and you gotta practice with this product, in my opinion. So one of the things that you're gonna wanna do is a Google search on AWS free tier. The AWS free tier is going to allow you to create a free account on Amazon Web Services. Now. Keep in mind that not all of the Amazon Web Service components are going to be available for you in this free tier, but Amazon Web Services does a great job of letting you know what is free and what isn't free so that you can manage that. This is going to require a credit card, but that credit card would only be charged after the free time period elapses, and they're going to notify you about that, and there should be no surprises whatsoever when it comes to that situation. So the Amazon Web Services free tier, a great way for you to get hands-on experience with Amazon Web Services and master these courses, whether you're interested in certification or not. So here I am logged in to Amazon Web Services, and one of the first things we note in the top right corner is that we have these regions around the world where we can locate the services that we're providing complements of AWS. So right away, we see that we have this geocentric approach in organizing resources in an area that makes sense. Inside of these regions, there are what are called availability zones. So if I'm servicing the east coast of the United States, northeast kind of section, 
and I do the North Virginia region with my Amazon Web Service implementation, notice with inside that region, I can spread resources across availability zones to help increase the reliability and the availability of those services. Now, what services do we really, really focus on when it comes to the SysOps course? Well, obviously, one of those that we're going to have to focus on is under networking and content delivery, and it's called the VPC, your virtual private cloud. So if we go there, we can see the ingredients that make up the virtual private cloud. Notice there is security groups. IP addressing, there's an internet gateway, there's subnets, there's a network access control list. So the virtual private cloud is your virtual network in Amazon Web Services. You're given a virtual network by default. And that's going to allow you to immediately start constructing resources in the virtual network that you need your end users to consume. Now, what would be an example of a virtual private cloud resource that we would need? Well, certainly this would be an instance of a virtual machine. At some point, we're going to need a server. And in that uh, cloud, in our virtual private cloud, we can create many different servers. Let's go take a look at that. The server aspect of Amazon Web Services is right under here with compute, and it's called EC2. That stands for Elastic Cloud Compute. Now, why the word elastic? Well, one of the things that Amazon Web Services can do for us that's so incredibly powerful is AWS can scale automatically our resources. This is called an auto scaling feature. And when we need more resources, it can dynamically add those. Think about a great application of this. What if we are a online retailer and during some periods of the week that we get crushed with traffic? If you're going to do a traditional data center approach for this business, you're going to have to add all these servers for those peak times. And then those poor servers are just going to sit there pretty much idle doing nothing when we don't have those peak times. So with Amazon Web Services, we have this amazing ability to auto scale things for those busy time periods and not be paying for those things when we don't need them. If you go under here, notice I have two running instances inside the EC2 dashboard. So if we click those running instances, we'll actually see them. So I have a Windows Server 2016 system running. And then here, this unlabeled system is actually an Amazon flavor of Linux. And the reason why I have this always running in my Amazon Web Services is that I use this Linux flavor to use the command line inside of this image in order to run commands against Amazon Web Services. How cool is that? So let me review with you the three ways you can manage your AWS infrastructure. There's actually more, but there's three main ways that we would use. Obviously, we have this web console that I've been demonstrating in this webinar. The graphical user interface we get to from a web browser on a machine that has an internet connection. And then we have the command line interface that I just described, which is running in this Linux instance inside my AWS. And then there is a bunch of software development kits available for Amazon Web Services that will allow you to use various programming languages APIs in order to script against Amazon Web Services. So all these great options when it comes to actually managing the cloud. And in our SysOps course, I you know, really elaborate on these and give demonstrations of them for you. Now, when you have your virtual machines running in your virtual private cloud, obviously these machines are going to need storage. There are two main storage options that we discuss in this course. Both of them are absolutely critically important. There are S3 
the simple storage service, S3 buckets that you can create in Amazon Web Services, but something even more powerful, especially when it comes to your Amazon images that you're running, is called Elastic Block Store, or EBS. This functions just like a hard drive. It's amazing. And notice that we can set up volumes on which to store our Amazon machine images, and we can also provide additional EBS volumes for storing data on those virtual servers. We have the ability to go in and use snapshots to make sure that we're backing this up frequently and effectively. In fact, with many of the services I cover with you, including relational database services, we learn how something like your databases Amazon is automatically, by default, backing up your database data. So you get these amazingly robust backup capabilities. And obviously, while they're backing stuff up by default, you could go in there and trigger backups whenever you deem necessary. Something else that's really cool with rel relational database services is our ability to create what's called a read-only replica of our information. We can spin this up, no problem, and we can locate these read-only replicas in other regions and other availability zones. Now, another emphasis in our course with AWS, because it is so much on the minds of administrators these days when they discuss a move to the cloud, is security. In fact, many chief information officers these days are scared to even move to the public cloud because of security concerns, so we made sure in this course to really run through security. We look at the ability of security groups inside of Amazon Web Services, and we leverage what's called identity and access management services in AWS to make sure that we have user accounts that can coordinate to individuals inside our organization and that those individuals can only do what we want them to do inside the Amazon Web Service environment. We have access control lists, as we talked about a moment ago, that give us the ability to control traffic inside our virtual private cloud and outside of our virtual private cloud. And also, something that we need to look at in this course, and we do so, is load balancing, as I described. So if we want to have multiple, let's say, web servers, and we want to distribute the load across those different web servers, it's easy to do, and I teach you how to do that inside our SysOps course. In fact, we even discuss the fact that these days in AWS, there's two types of load balancing. There's a classic load balancer that exists in the software for us, and then there's an application level network load balancer for us that allows us to get really granular on how we're gonna do the load balancing, and this has to do with the queuing of certain API calls that we can literally distribute to certain systems. So very, very advanced capabilities when it comes to AWS. Now, something else that you're going to want to do is carefully monitor your Amazon Web Service environment. Not only are you interested in monitoring the overall performance that you're getting out of your virtual network, your virtual machines, your virtual applications, you know, you want to make sure everything's performing the way you want it. And you also want to be careful about costs. So you want to closely monitor costs in the Amazon Web Service ecosystem. So we teach you all about CloudWatch in this course, and we're going to be using CloudWatch in order to not only, you know, monitor those resources like we spoke of for performance, but also do things like create billing alarms so that we will know if we are all of a sudden running into costs that exceed the IT budget we've carved aside for this aspect of our infrastructure. So great, great monitoring capabilities are available for us thanks to CloudWatch. Now, of course, we're going to be opening up to questions and answers in this webinar, but I realize 
after the fact, you may have quite a few questions for me. So if you'd like to contact me with those questions, no problem at all. You can do so by heading over to my blog site at ajsnetworking.com. If you scroll down in the blog site, notice there is a category dedicated to Amazon Web Services. So you can go to that category and you can comment on any of these posts and I will see that and others that uh, subscribe to this blog will see it as well. So feel free to post questions there after this live webinar. By the way, if you'd like to see an example of this AWS course, you can at my blog site. Notice I've posted one on using none other than the Amazon Web Services command line interface that we spoke of in this webinar. So here is the full nugget that is inside of my course on the CLI. Well, I know you're going to have questions for me here in the live webinar, so let's move to that question and answer period now.